اگر میں بدی کو دل میں رکھتا تو خداون میری نہ سنتا لیکن یقیناً خداون نے سن لیا ہے مسیح یسو کے عظیم بابر کے جلالی نام میں آپ تمام نیشنل نیوز دیکھنے والوں پر خداون کی سلامتی ہو پروگرام خداون کی آواز میں آج صبح میں آپ کو ویلکم کرتا ہوں آج خداون کی آواز کو ہم سب تک پہنچائیں گے پاسٹر برنٹ ان کا تعلق ہے ساؤتھ افریقہ سے اور یہ آج کل پاکستان میں موجود ہیں اپنے مشنری دورے پر پاسٹر برنٹ کے حوالے سے میں آپ کو بتانا چاہتا ہوں کہ ان کا اپنا چرچ ہے ساؤتھ افریقہ میں اور یہ مختلف ملکوں میں ہر سال خداون کی کلام کی منادی کو پھیلانے میں سرگرم رہتے ہیں پاسٹر برنٹ کے حوالے سے میں آپ کو بتانا چاہتا ہوں کہ خداون نے ان کے دل میں بہت یہ چیز کو رکھا ہوا ہے کہ یہ خداون کے کلام کی منادی کو کریں اور ایک اور جو ان کو خداون کی طرف سے بخشش توڑا ملا ہے وہ ہیلنگ کا ہے میں ان کے ساتھ مختلف جگہوں پر گیا اور میں نے دیکھا کہ بہت سے لوگ ان کے کلام کے وسیلہ سے انہوں نے برکت بھی حاصل کی اور اپنی بیماریوں سے نجات بھی حاصل کی تو آج کا کلام ہم سب کے لیے باعث برکت ہوگا یقیناً آپ اس کلام کے وسیلہ سے برکت کو ریسیو کریں گے اور بہت سی جو آپ کو مشکلات کا سامنا ہے ان سے بھی نجات حاصل کریں گے اس کلام کو سنیے گا یقیناً ہم سب کے لیے یہ روحانی ترقی کا بھی باعث بنے گا Hello everybody, my name is Brent Brading. I'm a pastor from South Africa, from a church called Outlook Church. And uh, this is my second visit to Pakistan and it's a privilege to be here and a privilege to be able to address you on National News Channel. Thank you for this opportunity, the good work that you're doing, spreading the gospel, encouraging Christians and building up the church, not just here in Pakistan, but right around the world. And I pray that God would continue to use you mightily, which is why I want to share an important message with you uh, today. And uh, I want to talk to you very quickly about what I call the leadership difference. You see, as Christians, God has called us to make a difference. And the problem that I see as I travel in, uh, around Africa, into South America, and even here into some of the parts of Asia, many times we see that the leaders in the church look the same as the leaders in the world. And, and that shouldn't be. In fact, when Jesus was speaking to his disciples, talking to them about leadership, it says in uh, Matthew chapter 20, verses 25, it says, But Jesus called his disciples together and he said, You know that the rulers of this world lorded over their people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. In other words, that's the kind of leadership we see in the world so often. There's a, a leadership of control. There's a leadership of dictating. There's a leadership of forcing people to do things. But then Jesus said these words, And I want these words to go straight into your heart. Every one of us as Christians, especially pastors, especially leaders, but to all of us as Christians, verse 25, it says, but among you, it will be different. Let me say that again. These are Jesus' words to his leaders. He says, leaders, but among you, it will be different. In other words, Jesus is looking for a type of leadership in the kingdom that is different to the world. And then he explains it. He says it like this. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. He doesn't say it would be good if you served or you should help around. No, Jesus said, if you want to be a leader in the kingdom, you must be. Be a servant. Now, that doesn't just speak about hands. It speaks about our heart. It speaks about a dedication to serving those around us. And then he takes it one step further. And he says, and whoever wants to be first, that means the captain of the team. That means the one in charge. Whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. These are powerful words. I love the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is radically different to the ways of the world. And Jesus is calling for a, leaders, a leadership style that is completely different to the world. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give His life as a ransom for many. And once again, we see that Jesus sets the example. He doesn't tell us to do something that he didn't do. In fact, Jesus was the one who did it the most. He showed us the way and he modeled the way. So with that in mind, I want to share just briefly today about one of my favorite leaders in scripture. He's uh, an incredible man of God and uh, most of us would know him by the name Barnabas, but actually Barnabas was not his name. Barnabas was his nickname. A nickname is a name that you give someone because uh, you see something in their lives which is so apparent that you choose to 
to call him. Actually, Barnabas' name was Joseph. But it, uh, it says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 36, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. In other words, there must have been such a strong a characteristic of encouragement in his life that eventually people didn't call him Joseph anymore. They just said, hey, son of encouragement. Hey, encourager. This was the type of leader that Barnabas was. Now, I call it leadership difference because Barnabas was a different leader. In fact, every time Jesus touched someone's life, they were different. I mean, for example, blind man was brought to Jesus. He touched the man's eyes and his eyes were different. They brought to Jesus a man who, who was mute. He couldn't speak. Jesus touched him and he was different. There was a, that man who was paralyzed, lying in front of Jesus. Jesus reached out his hand, touched him, and the man got up and walked. In other words, every time Jesus touches a life, they should be different. And so this is my question, leaders, if, if we're just leading the same way the world does, if we're leading the same way as politicians do, if we lead the same way as business people do, have we really been touched by Jesus? Because when Jesus touches our lives, we should be different. And this man, uh, Barnabas, was so different. So he has an example from his life. It's a, it's a beautiful story from, uh, from Acts chapter 11. A new church plant had just happened. Uh, some, uh, uh, because of the persecution that happened when Stephen was martyred, the disciples began to scatter into different areas. And I'm going to pick it up in Acts chapter 11 and verse 19. It says, Now those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. For me, those are probably three of the saddest words in the whole of the Bible. You see, the Holy Spirit had just spoken to the church. If you do some homework, you read Acts chapter 10. The Holy Spirit came in power. Peter uh, had a vision one day when he was uh, in the afternoon. He fell into a trance and, and the Holy Spirit showed him this picture of a picnic basket coming down from heaven with food that a Jewish person should never eat. And the Holy Spirit said, take and eat. And Peter said, I can't eat food that's unclean. And the Holy Spirit said to him, don't call anything unclean that I have made clean. And, and Peter was worried. What does this vision mean? And, and the Holy Spirit said to him, there's going to be a knock on the door. I want you to go with them. So there's a knock on the door. He opens it and they Gentiles. Now we have to understand Jews and Gentiles, they did not mix. They, they, they kept themselves apart from one another. Up to that point, the gospel was only for the Jews. But the Holy Spirit had said, Go with these men. And so Peter takes a, a few of the other disciples with him and they travel. And they go to uh, this Gentile home and, and Peter steps into a room full of Gentiles, which was out of his comfort zone. He was already being stretched and he begins to preach the gospel about Jesus. And he's preaching about Jesus, who's a Jew and uh, salvation for the Jews. And all of a sudden, as he's preaching about Jesus, it says the Holy Spirit fell upon the Gentiles. And, it, and the Holy Spirit came upon them in power. They began to be filled with the Holy Spirit. They spoke out in other tongues. And, and Peter had this revelation. The gospel is not just for Jews. The gospel is equally for all people. Rich, poor, black, white, whatever. The gospel is for everyone. It was a moment of revelation that pierced his heart. And of course, it was difficult for Peter now. He had to go back to the other apostles and explain to them this gospel. We thought Jesus wanted us to take the gospel to Jews all over the world. Now they realize, no, no, the Great Commission is really a great commission because this message is for everyone. The Holy Spirit has spoken. The Holy Spirit said, church, this gospel is for everyone. And now what have we just read? As the people scattered, they began to preach the gospel to only the Jews. Now, this is the challenge, church. You see, so often the biggest hindrance we have is our own tradition and culture. We've always done it this way in the past. The Holy Spirit had spoken prophetically. The gospel is for everyone. But as the people scattered, they fell back into their old tradition and preached only to the Jews. And then came a few men. I love this. It says in verse number 20, Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks, also telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? I don't know about you, but for me, in our church, in my life, I want the hand of the Lord to be with me, to help the anointing and power of God. But if we want that, 
We need the courage to be different. We need the courage to not just do what we've always done in the past, to not just fall back into our past tradition, but to listen carefully. Holy Spirit, what are you saying through your word to your people? And these people responded. They were different and the hand of the Lord was with them. Now, I love this. The story carries on. It says, news of this in verse 22, reached the church in Jerusalem and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. So now we, we meet this man, Barnabas. Remember his name means son of encourager. He was a different leader. So can you imagine he's stepping into this brand new church plant. He's been asked to be the new pastor of this church. And I want to quickly show you how different this man Barnabas is. It said, when he arrived and saw what what the grace of God had done, he was glad. Some translations say, when he saw the evidence of God's grace. The first thing different about Barnabas was his eyes. He saw differently. Most people see problems. Most people see uh, things that cannot be done. Most people see uh, just all the problems and issues in the world. Barnabas saw differently. He could see what God was doing in a situation. That's the kind of leader we need. People who see opportunity. People who see the goodness and grace of God. It says he was... He was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. I love that. Here's what was different. Not just his eyes, but his tongue. He spoke differently. I don't know about you, but most Christians out here, they complain about this, complain about Corona and the economy and unemployment and this and that. Not Barnabas. He was a different leader. His tongue was different. He spoke words of encouragement. It said, um, Verse 24, he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Not just eyes different, tongue different, but his heart, full of the Holy Spirit. The only way our hearts will be different is not trying to do better, but when we're full of the Holy Spirit. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. I love that. Do you know the first job Barnabas did was leave the church and go all the way to Tarsus, which was a long way away because his hands were different. He didn't want to be that leader that controlled everything. He opened his hands to build a team. He opened his hands to empower. He opened his hands to uplift others. And then finally, it says, So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. The last thing, his feet were different. He wasn't here, there, everywhere. No, no, consist whole year, he just taught the word of God. His feet consistently, one step after another. So I want to challenge you, church, leaders, whoever you are who's watching and listening to this, let's not be like the world. Let's be different. When Jesus touches a life, they are different. Barnabas, different eyes, different tongue, different heart, different hands, different feet. Let's be different for Jesus in Jesus' name. Hope it helps. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for watching this and I hope to get to be on the channel again soon. God bless everyone. Bye for now. Small prayer, please. Small prayer. I want to pray just very quickly for all of those Christians who might be watching Heavenly Father in Jesus' name. I want to thank you for those who are hungry for your word, who are watching this great channel, who want to learn more and more about you. And Father, I pray that your gracious hand would come and rest upon every one of those watching today. That you would encourage them, you would inspire them, that you would strengthen them. I pray, Lord God, that you would stretch out your mighty hand to work in their lives with power through signs and wonders. Thank you for the church. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you that you're raising up a new breed of leaders who are different. Bless them, I pray. Fill them with your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen.